Today we're going to review Module 6A. We're going to start with a discussion of cytology. Remember that cytology is the study of cells. Here we see a diagram of an animal cell and a plant cell. And remember that the distinguishing characteristic between the animal cell and the plant cell is the presence of a cell wall that gives a plant cell structure that animal cells don't have. Both animal and plant cells need to perform 11 different life functions. The first one that we're going to discuss is absorption. Remember that absorption is the transport of dissolved substances into the cells. And so in order to be absorbed by the cell, molecules need to be tiny and they need to be water soluble. Remember that a cell membrane or a plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane and so it doesn't allow for diffusion. In other words, it doesn't allow for the random distribution of these water soluble molecules. Instead, it's very choosy about what it lets into the cell and what it ejects from the cell. Once the cell has absorbed nutrients from its surroundings, it will perform the process of digestion. Digestion primarily happens in food vacuoles. Remember that during digestion, absorbed substances are broken down into smaller molecules. In animal cells, this also takes place in the lysosomes. The lysosomes are specialized organelles that specifically break down lipids and proteins and complex carbohydrates. Once the molecules are broken down into very small bits, the cell is able to perform biosynthesis. Biosynthesis is the process of taking these small molecules and making them into new substances that the individual cell can use and that they can share with other cells. Some things that are made within the cell are enzymes and hormones and things like that. Respiration is the process by which these small molecules that have been allowed into the cell are broken down specifically for the release of energy. And so it is slightly different than digestion. Digestion, the molecules are broken down into smaller pieces and can be used by the cell to biosynthesize other molecules that are needed. Respiration takes place in the mitochondria and the function of respiration is to release energy for life. Another function of the plasma or the cell membrane is excretion. Excretion is basically the opposite of absorption. If a molecule is small enough to pass through the plasma membrane, it will be excreted. If, however, it's not large enough to pass through the plasma membrane, it goes through the process of egestion. In egestion, a waste vacuole transports the waste molecules to the plasma membrane and then releases them. Similarly, secretion is the process by which chemicals like hormones that have been biosynthesized within the cell are transported to the edge of the plasma membrane and then released. Another function of the cell is movement. When we read earlier in the semester, about organisms in the kingdoms Protista and Monera. We learned about the different ways that those single-celled organisms were able to move. In multicellular creatures, when we discuss movement, we're talking about movement inside the cell. Waste vacuoles and secretion vacuoles, we've already discussed how they move through the cell. I'm going to show you a short video that demonstrates movement inside an onion cell. Hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today we're going to look at the cell organelles of this onion here. I'll have to first uh, dissect it and then I'll put it under the microscope. Mm -hmm. 
well, there is absolutely no need to chop apart uh, the whole onion. So what I'm doing is I'm simply cutting out a little square, uh, just the right size to, uh, to be placed um, under the microscope. So a parallel cut, uh, you turn the onion 90 degrees, another parallel cut, um, and I'll be able to get some of the onion layers out. Uh, they drop out quite easily. And what I'm interested in is uh, in observing the so-called the onion skin. And this uh, can be taken off quite easily with your fingers. So you see it peels off. And uh, this uh, layer is only one cell layer thick. Um, and uh, that means it's uh, perfect to be placed under the microscope. So I'm just gonna do another one here. You can see that uh, this onion skin here, the inside skin here peels off quite easily. And uh, this is then gonna be put on a microscope slide. Well, here is the slide. First, a small uh, drop uh, of water. That is uh, pretty much uh, all you need um, because uh, you want uh, to directly place the onion skin into this water. Um, it sticks a little bit so you can see I have some problems getting it off my tweezers. I place uh, a drop of water on the top. It doesn't want to stay there really because uh, the part, uh, the top part seems to be a little bit hydrophobic. In any case, uh, a cover glass does go on top um, and uh, all of the excess water uh, that I'm going to remove now because I do not want that my microscope becomes flooded when the water spills over the edge of the microscope slide. So a little bit of tissue paper um, will do the trick here. You can see that the onion skin is now compressed and flat on the microscope slide and we're ready to roll. It goes under the microscope and let's have a look um, at some of these cells here. And what you can see is that the cells, they look like bricks in a wall. So all of those little horizontal structures, these are all the individual cells. Um, and what you see here, uh, that is, uh, these are the cell walls. The cell walls are quite, uh, quite thick, um, but the inside of the cell, hmm, you don't seem to see a lot um, at this magnification. I'm using my four times magnifying objective, but look at the cell in the center, right? The cell in the center. I'm going to now go a little bit higher. We're using the 10 times uh, objective and we can see that the central cell has a circle um, at the top and this circle that is the nucleus which uh, stores the DNA yet at a higher magnification the circle now of course also becomes bigger it's pretty much in the center and now we can already see a little bit of movement maybe you can see that there are small dots uh, streaming inside the cell now uh, yet at a higher magnification those dots they have a directional movement they're not just wiggling around but they're actually streaming and they seem to be vesicles time lapse and here we can see it quite well okay that's a time lapse image you can see that these small cell organelles they seem to be vesicles carrying substances around they basically move around in a cell this is now 20 times uh, the original speed and you can see that uh, there are almost like little highways inside a cell um, along which uh, these cell organelles uh, seem to move. And as a matter of fact, these vesicles, what they, they are being done is they're being pulled along a protein network inside the cell called the cytoskeleton. These are small, microscopically not even visible because they're so small um, protein fibers. And what they do is they pull along these vesicles. Yet at a higher magnification, you can see that there's quite a little bit of activity going on around the nucleus here. Um, and uh, you can actually really see that there are certain paths uh, along which uh, the cells, uh, not the cells, the vesicles um, move. So um, again, time lapse 20 times uh, the original speed. And uh, some people uh, can also, yeah, we call this also cytoplasmic stream, uh, streaming. And some people also like to observe this um, in water plants called Elodia. I actually did make another video of this. And in Elodia, you can actually see the movement of the chloroplasts. And that's uh, also quite uh, nice and interesting to see. Yeah, so that is uh, basically uh, when we eat an onion, <laughs> you never forget that, or any cell for that matter, any fruit, any vegetable, never forget there is still quite a little bit of movement going on in your mouth when you chew it. This is now my mobile phone and now I held it in front of a low cost uh, educational microscope. Can we see it also with a low cost microscope like this? Or do we need a fancy expensive microscope? And sure enough, here we go. Look, even here, such a uh, 
uh, microscope also allows me to see or allows you to see the movement of these cell organelles. So you do not need any fancy equipment. By the way, an affiliate link to this microscope is in the description um, and uh, it actually shows that you do not need anything expensive to see uh, important uh, biological activity in cells. Um, it also works uh, quite fine with uh, this educational microscope. Yeah, so you can also see that there are these little dots the vesicles moving around. In any case, uh, let's enjoy the movement uh, of cell organelles a little bit for a couple of more seconds. I wish you in any case all the best, happy micro hunting, happy cell organelle hunting I should rather say. Um, and uh, see you next time. Please also like and subscribe the video. Um, and all the best, bye bye. Remember that one of the criteria of life was the ability of an organism to sense changes in its environment and react to those changes and respond to them. Irritability is basically that at the cellular level. Irritability is the function by which a cell within an organism senses what's going on around it and responds. Homeostasis is the process of the cell trying to maintain everything needed to continue to be healthy, whether that is absorbing nutrients or ejecting waste. In the case of plant cells, the central vacuole trying to maintain the rigidity of the cell, basically trying to maintain what scientists call the status quo, to keep a cell healthy and living. And the final function that we're gonna discuss is reproduction. Cells don't live forever, and so within an animal and within a plant, cells need to be reproduced. We're going to go ahead and discuss some of the other structures in both animal and plant cells in addition to the cell wall. First one that we are going to look at is the cell membrane. Recall that the cell membrane is the semi-permeable membrane that allows certain substances into the cell and keeps others out and then allows waste to leave the cell without allowing organelles to flow out. The cytoplasm is the viscous liquid inside a cell that allows for movement within the cell and gives something for the organelles to be suspended in. The nucleus is the organelle in the cell that contains the DNA. And the mitochondria are the organelles that break down food molecules into smaller pieces and release energy when doing so. The ribosomes are small organelles that are distributed throughout the cytoplasm, and they primarily biosynthesize proteins. The Golgi bodies are organelles where proteins and lipids are stored and then modified to suit whatever the cell needs in order to maintain homeostasis. The rough ER, or endoplasmic reticulum, are large organelles that are dotted with ribosomes, and they participate in the biosynthesis of proteins in the cell. Not pictured are the smooth ER. Remember that the smooth ER serve as a storehouse for fats, and for carbohydrates. Lysosomes are organelles found only in animal cells. They break down lipids and proteins and carbohydrates into small molecules that can be used to biosynthesize other molecules that the cell needs. In the plant cell, chloroplasts are cells that contain pigments that are used to biosynthesize and the central vacuole helps maintain the rigidity and the homeostasis of the cell by absorbing water or releasing it as needed.
As part of your homework this week, you were supposed to fill in a chart based on On Your Own Question 6.3. I thought as a review that we would just go through the answers that you should have gotten. If you got anything wrong, please take the time to correct yourself. Remember that you were supposed to write down which function each of the organelles performed within the cell. And so the cell wall performs absorption, secretion, excretion, and egestion. Remember that cell walls are only found in plant cells and they primarily give the cell its structure. The plasma membrane or the cell membrane also performs absorption, secretion, excretion, and egestion. The cytoplasm allows for movement within the cell. It allows other functions also. The mitochondrion perform respiration and the lysosomes perform digestion. Ribosomes perform biosynthesis, specifically they biosynthesize proteins. The smoothie R also performs biosynthesis, but they also allow for movement, excretion, and egestion. The rough ER perform biosynthesis and allow for movement. And the Golgi body primarily allows for movement within the cell, but it also participates in biosynthesis and secretion. Chloroplasts perform biosynthesis. Leucoplasts help maintain homeostasis within the cell, as does the central vacuole. In fact, the main function of all vacuoles is to help maintain homeostasis. Food vacuoles help maintain homeostasis by digesting food and providing nutrients for the cell, allowing it to continue to live. And waste vacuoles help maintain homeostasis by getting rid of wastes within the cell that don't need to be accumulating there. The secretion vesicles secrete and provide movement within the cell. Centrioles, which we didn't discuss when we were reviewing the cell a moment ago, provide movement and reproduction. And finally, the nucleus as the part of the cell that contains all the DNA, is the master of the cell, helps with all functions. Remember that we discussed phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and secretion. In phagocytosis, the cell is taking in larger pieces of food by engulfing them, making a food vacuole, and then digesting the food. In pinocytosis, the cell is absorbing larger molecules, not pieces, but molecules. And so it doesn't actually engulf those molecules of food. As the cell encounters those molecules of food, the plasma membrane folds in on itself and creates a food vesicle. Remember, a vacuole is a larger organelle than a vesicle. A vesicle is a very small organelle. And inside the food vesicle, the molecules of food are digested. In secretion, in secretion, the Golgi body pulls together things that have been biosynthesized. It creates a secretion vesicle, and when the secretion vesicle reaches the plasma membrane, it is released out of the cell. Remember that in these diagrams, you need to be able to identify the Golgi body, and in the case of secretion, the secretion vesicle. In the case of pinocytosis, the food vesicle. And in the case of phagocytosis, the food vacuole that's created.